Sean Tierney here with uh, Dr. Sandra Goins at Pacific Healing and Wellness and we're talking about uh, the vagus block. So the vagus block or vagus hydro dissection. So you know vagus nerve is kind of big in the news of healthcare and uh, recovery uh, for vagus nerve stimulation people do for um, post-COVID or uh, with PTSD. Um, the vagus nerve has uh, been a big issue um, with chiropractors for a long time adjusting C1 uh, the, the vagus nerve along with the hypoglossal and the glossopharyngeal nerve uh, sit right in front of C1 uh, and also along with some branches of the facial nerve and the spinal accessory nerve. So you have this nerve plexus at C1 that we may address and we also have the vagus nerve that can be addressed uh, with a block at uh, C5. So the vagus nerve is the relaxation digestion side of our nervous system. It's the parasympathetic uh, nerve for a lot of uh, for the heart and for the abdomen and it has pretty dramatic effects on how our brain functions as well um, as far as fight or flight would be the sympathetic side where it's relaxation more the parasympathetic side we say parasympathetic uh, is more feed peed and breed side of our uh, nerve system and it's that balance between the two that gets us keeps us functioning well uh, it's in modern life, a lot of times the sympathetic system, uh, the fight or flight side can override our parasympathetic side, so we're unable to enjoy life and be at peace with life as much. So the stellate ganglia block is something that's been done for you know well over 100 years. More recently it's been done with uh, expert guidance using ultrasound. and. Uh, the real effect of that blocking the sympathetic nervous system uh, or using local anesthetic to block the sympathetic chain in the neck is that it allows and enhances the ability of the parasympathetic nervous system to express itself. So if, you're one, if one sympathetic side is overriding the parasympathetic or vagus side, then we can kind of get stuck in this hyperstimulated state a state where we can't relax and find peace. So, what do we do this block for? To help people be more at peace. We do the block to help people be more focused. We do the block to help whenever our nervous systems get out of balance. Um, a common reason of recent time would be, you know, sometimes when people have a, a traumatic event, they get blood pressure abnormalities where they have difficulty maintaining their blood pressure when they stand up or when they get up from lying down. Uh, uh, postural hypotension, which is an issue pretty commonly um, after people have COVID and this post-COVID syndrome. They might have this postural hypertension where they get dizzy, they get you know, maybe a lack of ability to exercise. Um, and it's, you know, it's just really a difficult and disabling thing to go through. So one of the targets um, to get that back online is to hydrodissect uh, the vagus nerve or block the sympathetic chain in the neck. So it's hydrodissecting the vagus nerve. Let's talk about that. So we're going to talk about very carefully guiding a needle safely and effectively to the front side of, of C1 between the digastric and the muscle and the rectus capitis anterior muscle, where it's a plexus of nerves, uh, cranial nerves, including the vagus nerve. And when we block them, um, if somebody's heart rate is too low or their blood pressure is off, a lot of times that's regulated because their system has been deregulated by some kind of stress. So by block, by hydrodissecting that nerve, we can enhance the effectiveness of those nerves. And we can also break those adhesions that may have occurred around those nerves for whatever reason. Maybe it was trauma, maybe it was an infection, uh, maybe it was uh, some other kind of stress to the system and it created adhesions around those nerves. When we hydrodissect, we're kind of breaking all of the limitations in the nerve's ability to move between muscles. And also sometimes the nerve's ability to move within itself. So that hydrodissection enhances the function of the vagus nerve 
and normalize this to function in the vagus nerve for a lot of people. Um, it's that hotter day section, very valuable. I had a patient had bradycardia, just about ready to get a, uh, a uh, pacemaker put in, had had COVID, and heart rate was, you know, much too low. Um, uh, but in, in the incident of treating other things, we, said, we decided we'd go ahead and hydro dissect the vagus nerve. When we hydro dissected it, the heart rate went from 30 to 74 and stayed there for three days. So because it didn't last, we decided to use some uh, some kind of regenerative solution along with that hydro dissection. And that regenerative solution uh, helped it function, their function a little bit better. And then that patient has been uh, free of that bradycardia for for 30 days now. Another case um, would be, you know, or multiple cases, I would say, where people had the POTS, where they, you know, have difficulty standing up, getting dizzy, maybe even can't walk across a room without getting out of breath, or if you want to kind of pass on. And we've had multiple cases where people did very well with that hydro dissection. So that's the vagus nerve hydro dissection. Um, and a lot of times, the whole nervous system is, kind of stressed out and needs a reboot. And if that's the case, we can block the vagus nerve at C5, uh, either inside the carotid sheath or outside of the carotid sheath. It's going to have a, it's also going to block, just because of the local, local locality of that injection, it's also going to block the sympathetic chain. So you're blocking the entire autonomic nervous system on one side of your body. And that can have a profound effect um, on on all that deregulation and imbalances that have happened from the stress of, you know, trauma, the stress of a head injury, the stress of um, an infection. So that vagus block um, is is a dramatic thing to do. It's slightly different than the hydro day section. It's more of a reset where we turn the switch off, kind of rebooting the computer. So we're rebooting our autonomic, autonomic nervous system. It's kind of like if you had a computer that wasn't functioning, especially with my old, used to have all um, analog computers, you know, and um, it, it would be maybe once a month I'd have a problem and the first thing that the tech would say to me, hey, did you shut the computer off and turn it back on? And I'd say, yes, well, did you shut it off and turn it back on? Shut it off for a full two minutes and then turn it back on. I'm like, no, okay, we'll do that and call me back. So I call him back and so, so what happened? Um, it's better. Okay, so I, um, you, know, don't, you don't have to call me for this again. So rebooting the computer can make, or a hard reboot, I mean, sometimes people say five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, is kind of like rebooting the autonomic system by doing a Vegas and sympathetic block uh, in the neck at C5. Um, the other thing you may notice for Vegas blocks when you look them up is that there is some studies, not very good studies and not very not numerous enough studies, but there are some studies that claim uh, that people who have a vagus block uh, will lose 22 pounds and they maintain that weight loss for two years, you know, without changing their diet, um, which we actually have seen happen, but I'm not sure that we've seen quite the predictability that was in that study. But still, it's something to be aware of. Certainly, we're resetting the way our nervous system is understanding how much we ate. Do we eat the right amount of food? Do we not eat the right amount of food? So that's the uh, vagus block, separate from the vagus nerve primary dissection. Uh, I myself, personally, um, if I was going to get any treatment that I felt good to try to feel better, the, uh, the vagus hydro dissection, it really just feels like when you have that, you're more focused, you're more alert, you're more uh, uh, almost brighter. Eyes feel brighter, everything just kind of feels tuned up a little bit. So that Vegas hydro section is going to have a good feeling for some people. And uh, certainly a fairly safe thing to do, fairly, fairly inert thing to do, because it's pretty much drug-free. We're using mostly sugar and water uh, for just a hydro dissection. So. It works as a structural change. Obviously, sugar water is not a drug change, right? If we did a vagus block 
you got some for about six to eight hours you have some side effects just because the vagus nerve um, runs with and, and the laryngeal nerve which is actually the laryngeal nerve branches off of the vagus nerve they're pretty high so if you block the vagus nerve you, you're going to block in most cases the laryngeal nerve and the laryngeal nerve control, controls your ability to talk and swallow so the tendency is if we get a, a good vagus nerve block you're going to have difficulty swallowing a very extreme lump in your throat you get that with the cellulite block but much more significantly uh, with the vagus block so difficulty swallowing and uh, sometimes even a little bit of a cough and very likely you'll have a hoarse voice like we would say you lost your voice if you were uh, ill so with the vagus nerve block you're going to use Rapidocaine. Rapidocaine is a the, the least toxic non. Uh, I'd say the rapidocaine is the least toxic, uh, long-lasting, local anesthetic. So it's pretty much a numbing agent that you know it should last for about four to six hours, versus you know lidocaine, which should last if we did a block lidocaine from two to four hours. So that longer lasting reboot, kind of like the difference between turning the computer off and turning it back on again right away versus turning it off for 10 minutes and then turning it back on. So that longer lasting reboot seems to have a significant effect uh, on how lasting and effective those blocks are. So we use 0.5% pivocaine for the biggest nerve block. And for the hydrated section, um, very commonly we'll use um, one cc of one percent lidocaine, um, one point uh, one cc's of uh, dexamethasone, and we'll uh, another nine cc's of uh, five percent dextrose or sugar water, and we'll split that between both sides. So we'll put five cc's on either side to hydrate sec that fascial plane where the vagus nerve sits in front of C1. So that's our vagus nerve hydrate section solution for the basic hydrate section. It's a kind of a basic hydrate section solution, period. Now, uh, a lot of times we'll use more regenerative solutions, and um, different offices do use different things, but that just said that sometimes that regenerative solution that actually helps and stimulates the nerve to heal and recover uh, can be more effective, although it's definitely going to be a cost because you have to pay for that, you know, that solution, whatever that is.